hello students welcome to the subject of monitoring and evaluation the next lesson in this is approaches and developmental steps in monitoring and evaluation in this let us understand the various types of approaches in monitoring and evaluation gain knowledge on supporting types of monitoring while developing a project and also illustrate the developmental steps in monitoring and evaluation Monitoring and evaluation provides a better means of learning from past experience, improving service delivery, planning and allocating resources and demonstrating results as part of accountability to key stakeholders. Some are broadly applicable while others are quite narrow in their uses. The choice of which is appropriate for any given context will depend on a range of considerations. selecting an appropriate approach for a particular program or project is considered the approaches can be classified into two categories that is program oriented approach and people oriented approach program oriented approach also called as objective oriented approach is the approach that emphasizes on how the objectives are to be measured people oriented approach is the approach that focuses on the process and the people involved in the project more than the objectives or goals the models under program oriented approach are attainment of objectives model naturalistic model and experimental model first attainment of objectives model this model assumes that the success of a program can be determined by measuring a program's outcomes against its own goals and objectives this type of evaluation begins with clarifying measurable objectives and then gathering data that validate the extent to which these objectives have been met if an attainment of objectives evaluation is anticipated programs are often tempted to set goals quite low so that outcomes will be met easily thus appearing to be successful while ignoring major challenges next is naturalistic model this model assumes that a program is a natural experiment and that the purpose of evaluation is to understand how the program is operating in its natural environment data should be collected and analyzed from multiple perspectives the outcome of the evaluation is dialogue concerning disagreements about objectives expectations problems opportunities policies procedures and suggested changes in methods or activities many positive collaborative changes can be made through this model of evaluation if conflict resolution skills are combined with evaluation another purpose of this model is to diagnose or to identify the causes for certain behavior on the part of some people or sponsors next is experimental model the purpose of this approach is to determine whether changes in program outcomes are due to the contributions of the program and not just to life's experiences or from other influences because of the nature of human subjects the ethics of withholding educational services and the difficulty of controlling for external influences it is extremely difficult and costly to operationalize this model it is recommended that this model be used only when major changes are expected or when a major failure is anticipated in pilot efforts next let us see the models under people oriented approach they are expert model goal free model management decision model and participatory evaluation model first expert model this approach relies on expert judgment usually documentation is prepared in advance of experts visits the experts then interview analyze documents and make judgments using their own judgment perspectives or those set as standards by the outside organizations or stakeholders 
Typically, this type of evaluation brings in a team of experts from several countries to make judgments and comparisons regarding strengths and limitations. Next is goal-free model. This model assumes that outside evaluators do not know or need to know what the program has intended to accomplish. The task of the evaluators is to uncover what actually is happening relative to people's interests regardless of stated goals and intentions. The focus point is to identify the gap between the expectations of the people and with what people are actually experiencing as a result of the program. This identified gap is then viewed as a starting point for making changes in the program. This approach relies heavily on open-ended interviewing and observation. Next is management decision model. The purpose of this model is to provide relevant information as a management tool to decision makers. It assumes that evaluation should be geared to decisions during program initiation and operation stages to make results more relevant at each particular stage. Participation of stakeholders is central to the process because evaluation should serve their decisions. Sometimes cost effectiveness and operations monitoring are included. One limitation of this model is the tendency for the decision of major stakeholders to be viewed as more important than those of various types of people who may not benefit directly from such an evaluation unless care is taken. Next is participatory evaluation model. The purpose of this model is for extension educators and people themselves to initiate a critical reflection process focused on their own activities. This is done through identifying a persistent major situation such as neglect of women in agriculture extension and change practices. The model assumes a democratic participatory program. This is a form of what is usually called participatory action research. This is the most commonly used approach. Evaluation models are selected appropriately along with the appropriate monitoring type of choice for the successful completion of monitoring and evaluation process. Monitoring is the systematic and routine collection of data during project implementation for the purpose of establishing whether an intervention is moving towards the set objectives or project goals. In this case, the data is collected throughout the life cycle of the project and they include process monitoring, technical monitoring, assumption monitoring, financial monitoring and impact monitoring. First, let us see process monitoring or physical progress monitoring. In process monitoring, routine data is collected and analyzed in order to establish whether the project tasks and activities are leading towards the intended project results. It authenticates the progress of the project towards the intended results. This kind of monitoring measures the inputs, activities and outputs. In other words, process monitoring answers the questions like what has been done so far, where, when and how has it been done. Most of the data collected during project implementation usually serves this kind of monitoring. Next is technical monitoring. Technical monitoring involves assessing the strategy that is being used in project implementation to establish whether it is achieving the required results. It involves the technical aspects of the project such as the activities to be conducted. Example, in a safe water project, physical progress monitoring may show that there is little or no uptake of chlorination as a water treatment strategy. Technical monitoring may establish that this could be a result of installing chlorine dispensers at the water resource. This may prompt a change of strategy 
where the project might opt for household distribution of bottled chlorine. Next is assumption monitoring. Any project has its working assumptions which have to be clearly outlined in the project log frame. These assumptions are those factors which might determine project success or failure, but which the project has no control over. Assumption monitoring involves measuring these factors which are external to the project. It is important to carry out assumption monitoring as it may help to explain success or failure of a project. For example, a project that was promoting the use of contraceptives may realize that uptake of use of contraceptives has dropped. The drop in use of the contraceptive could however be attributed to increased taxation on the importation of contraceptives in the country which makes them more expensive rather than on project failure. The next monitoring is financial monitoring. Just like the name suggests, financial monitoring simply refers to monitoring project or program expenditure and comparing them with the budgets prepared at the planning stage. The use of funds at the disposal of a program or project is crucial for ensuring there are no excesses or wastages. Financial monitoring is also important for accountability and reporting purposes as well as for measuring financial efficiency that is the maximization of outputs with minimal inputs. Next is impact monitoring. Impact monitoring is a type of monitoring which continually assess the impact of project activities to the target population. Indeed, impacts are usually the long term effects of a project. However, for projects with long lifespan or programs, there emerges a need for measuring impact change in order to show whether the general conditions of the intended beneficiaries are improving or otherwise. In this case, the manager monitors impact through the predetermined set of impact indicators. For example, in a water and sanitation program, there may be a need to monitor the change in under 5 mortality in the program area over time. In this case, rather than being identified as an impact evaluation, this would be identified as impact monitoring. After understanding the various approaches available, let us comprehend the developmental steps in monitoring and evaluation. To make the project evaluation less intimidating and more manageable, it can be broken down into several manageable steps. The specifics of each step may vary depending on the nature, scope and complexity of the programs and the resources available for conducting the evaluation. In the first step, we identify and describe the proposed or existing program. That is, we identify and describe the goals and objectives, boundaries, stakeholders, staff required, users or the customers of the program or the project which you want to monitor and evaluate. Step 2. Identify the program phase and appropriate type of evaluation study. There are a number of types of evaluation studies such as needs assessment, baseline studies, formative evaluations, summative evaluations and follow up studies. The type of evaluation study utilized is selected on the basis of stage of program, program requirements and stakeholders interests. The next step is to assess the feasibility of implementing an evaluation study. Assessing the feasibility of a program evaluation helps to ensure that the program can be meaningfully evaluated and that the evaluation will contribute to improving program design and performance. The next step is to identify and consult key stakeholders. Stakeholders are people who have a stake or vested interest in the evaluation findings. They can be program funders, staff, administration, clients or program participants. 
It is important to clarify the purpose and procedures of an evaluation with key stakeholders before beginning. This process can help determine the type of evaluation needed and point to additional reasons for evaluation that may prove even more productive than those originally suggested. The next step is approaches to data collection. There are two basic types of data collection, quantitative and qualitative. Quantitative data tend to focus on numerical data, while qualitative data are expressed in words. Quantitative methods measure a finite number of pre-specific outcomes and are appropriate for judging effects, attributing cause, comparing or ranking, classifying and generalizing results. Quantitative methods are suitable for large scale projects and large population. Also useful for judging cause and effect and accepted as credible. Qualitative methods take many forms including rich description of people, places and conversations and behavior. The open-ended nature of qualitative methods allow the person being interviewed to answer questions from his or her own perspective. Qualitative methods are appropriate for understanding the context in which a program takes place. Complex problems and process issues clarifies relationships between program objectives and implementation helps in identifying unintended consequences of a program, gathering descriptive information, understanding operations and effects of program, in-depth analysis of program impacts. The next step is selecting data collection techniques. There is no one best method to use when collecting data for project evaluation. Selection of a method or methods should be influenced by the type of information needed, the time available and cost. Last but not least, you should consider whether the information collected will be viewed as credible, accurate and useful by the organization. A large array of methods exist which can be used in evaluation. Quantitative methods are existing information, testing information and knowledge, telephone service, mail service, group administered questionnaire, so on. And qualitative methods are focus group, rapid rural appraisal, case study, semi-structured interviews, participant observation and so on. The next step is sampling for evaluation. A sample is a set of respondents selected from a larger population for the purpose of a survey. When done properly, the sample represents the characteristics of the population as a whole. Sampling saves time, money, materials and efforts without sacrificing accuracy and precision. There are five steps in sampling. First. Define the sampling size, that is a sample size of 100 respondents is often cited as a minimal number for a large population. Second, calculate the sampling tolerance error. The difference between an estimate taken from the population and the taken from the sample when the same method is used to gather the data. Sampling error is larger when the sample size is small. It is therefore advisable to use the largest sample size possible given the constraints on time, money and material. Third, execute the sampling plan. Fourth, draw conclusions as used on the sampling information. Fifth, infer the conclusions back to the total population. The next step is collecting analyzing and interpreting the data. Various kinds of data analysis exist for both quantitative and qualitative data. Qualitative data analysis. 
Analysis and interpretation of qualitative data are not simple technical processes like the analysis of quantitative data. Analysis of qualitative data is the process of bringing order to the data and organizing what there is into patterns, categories and basic descriptive units. Interpreting qualitative data is the process of bringing meaning to the analysis, explaining patterns and looking for relationships and linkages among descriptive dimensions. The evaluator and or stakeholders then make judgments about assigning value or worth to what has been analyzed and interpreted. Quantitative data analysis. It is the simple statistical analysis. Scales of measurement refers to the type of variable being measured and the way it is measured. That include nominal, ordinal, interval and ratio. Nominal is mutually exclusive and logically exhaustive categories. Example, marital status, gender, group membership, religious affiliation. Ordinal is ranked or ordered. Examples, letter grades, social class, attitudinal variables. Interval. Interval is ranked and ordered in standard units of measurement. Examples, years of age, degree, calendar year, scores on a test, IQ, etc. Ratio is an interval scale with an absolute zero starting point. Examples, years of education, time, length, weight. The next step is communicate findings. Evaluators have a responsibility to report their findings to stakeholders and other audiences who may have an interest in the results. Communication with stakeholders should occur throughout the evaluation process to help ensure meaningful, acceptable and useful results. An evaluation report usually contains the program, the program setting, the purpose of the evaluation, the procedures used, a summary and analysis of findings, an explicit justification of conclusions and recommendations for future changes. The next step is step 10, applying and using findings. An evaluation should not be considered complete until the findings of the evaluation are applied. They are used to make decisions about program continuation, to improve ongoing programs, to plan future programs, to inform program stakeholders. This is all about the various approaches and developmental steps in monitoring and evaluation. Any questions? Hi ma'am, I have a doubt. How is goal-free model a people-oriented approach? Good question. Many people think that goal-free model is just that goals are not given or not specified. However, how it, it is a people-oriented approach. But you can see here that the focus point is to identify the gap between the expectations of the people and with what people are actually experiencing as a result of the program. This identified gap is then viewed as the starting point for making changes in the program. This is done using goal-free model. The task of the evaluators is to uncover what actually is happening relative to people's interests regardless of stated goals and intentions. That is why it is called as goal-free model and it is a people-oriented approach. Any more questions? Well, then we conclude the approaches and developmental steps in monitoring and evaluation. Thank you.